let's get started. So open the Square for Retail app, let it load and cache the inventory, and then you'll enter your employee ID, your passcode, whatever you want to call it, and then what I do first to complete a sale is I'll add an item. You can add them from the search bar here, or what you'll most likely want to do is tap this square icon here next to the search, and then find your barcode and scan it. And if you hold it here, it'll just keep scanning. Or you can move it away, move it back, scan again, and again, and again. Now, what you would probably want to do for changing the quantity is tap on the item, increase it, or decrease it. I just want two Mr. Heaters. And what you can do from here is receive stock, see stock at other locations, and apply discounts, adjust the price, add a note, comp an item, but I just wanted to change the quantity, so I'll save the changes, and it's reflected in the cart. Then, what you can do is save the cart, name it, you can associate it with the card by swiping, or I can just do Mike, and then I have that saved. So I can save a cart for another customer, or I can complete a transaction for another customer. Now to get that back, all you do is save carts, and then open that cart, wait a second, and then the cart is open again. And you can start scanning more items, change how many is in here, and do everything like before. Now, Mike is ready to check out. So what I'll do is tap Create Order, and I have Mike in the system already. You can also create a customer, but since I have Mike in here already, he's a great customer, I'll just tap Mike C right here. It has all his information, and I can add him to the sale. I have two options for the fulfillment pickup, which just lets you do a time and date, and add a note, but I'm going to do shipping and we'll do $100 for a shipping charge, flat rate shipping for his Mr. Heater heaters, and then you can add a note if you'd like, but we'll just stick to this. Tap done, and then you can add a custom tax or preset it up. What I would do for you is preset up your taxes for each location, and so it would be added automatically. Now at this point, you can't save the cart and you can't switch between anything. You have to complete the transaction. And all I do to do that is tap charge. And then Mike can pay with cash. And you can tap the amount he gives you in cash. You can tap a custom amount and put it in. And then it'll tell you how much change to give. You can do a manual card entry. Or without tapping anything, you can tap, swipe, or insert a credit card on your square reader. And you can also uh, use a gift card if they have one. Now, for testing purposes, I just do other payment types. Put a note for test. And then I'll do no receipt. I'm good. I don't need a receipt. And there's my order right here. And the transaction is complete. So I can go back and do a new sale. Now, what I'm going to show you is for Mike C again, I'm going to give him two Mr. Heater heaters by scanning the barcodes, but I'm going to create a payment plan for him. So what that looks like is adding the items the same way as before, scan the barcodes, we'll scan it twice because he wants two of them, and then if I didn't get the scanning quite right, I could adjust it here, and then what I'll do is create order for Mike C. You can do all of the same things, there's just one step after which it will be different and I'll let you know when that is so I'll add the shipping charge add my tax amount 8.25 percent and then this is the point where it gets a little different so you tap charge like before but what I do to for the payment plan is tap more other payment types and then I'll name it or leave a note rather you might see payment plan. So this is just indicating that it was paid for by a payment plan. It wasn't simply written off. So I'll record payment. It shows the receipt screen like before. Now what you want to do is note down that amount. 
So that's 1,182.39. Okay? And then what I do is calculate for my payment plan. So I noted that down, the amount, I go to square invoices, and what I'm going to do is create a recurring invoice. So I tap the plus, tap recurring invoice, and then I add a customer, Mike C, because Mike C is buying these. Then I'll add a line item of a custom amount and name it Mike C and plan, just to indicate what it is, and then the price. Now, I need to calculate the price. So I noted that amount down, and what I'll do is take the amount, and then I can add any fees. So say you charge 10%, a flat interest rate of 10% on the total amount. It increases the amount by that much. And then, so what you'll do is simply calculate that up, and then it comes out to 1300 62.9. And then what I'll do with that is divide that by the number of payments. In this case, you want to pay for it every month for one year. So divide it by 12, and that comes out to 108.38. So what I'll do is 108 point, and I don't have a decimal because it just adds it, and then I'll do 38. So 108.38. Add that to the invoice. You can change the quantity, but I don't need to. You can apply discounts, options, everything, but I'm just going to add my custom amount. And you can request a tip, but probably don't need to. Now what I'll do is set the repeating of recurring every month for a number of invoices, and I'll do 12 invoices. And there we go, it'll end then. And then it starts immediately in the service, we can leave blank. Now, you can allow automatic payments, but as you can see right there, it says 3.5% versus your negotiated or your other rate. 3.5% is the card not present rate, or the automatic billing rate is for higher risk payments, because a payment is more likely to be disputed if it was automatically charged to their account. They can also, if we select the options, do an ACH bank transfer, which has lower fees, or a gift card. So if a family member or friend gets them a gift card, they can apply that to something that they already bought. And then we'll check everything, make sure it's correct. It looks right. And I'll do continue right here. Deliver via email. And payment reminders, it shows me the preview. I can change the payment reminders, but I'm just going to leave the default of seven days before the due date on the due date, and one and three days after the due date. And I'll do send, and then you just have to wait a moment for it to send. And there it is. It shows as unpaid. Now, Mike C can open his email and pay that online, or he can pay in store. So all you have to do to make that payment is find the invoice, tap add payment, amount remaining, you can do another amount, but most likely you want them to pay the whole amount for that month. Tap next. And then it's the same as charging any other amount on Square for Retail. Now, with the card, you would just tap, swipe, insert, do a manual card entry, cash the same way, gift card. You can log a check or other gift card certificate or just, in my case, other. And I'll say test to mark it as paid. And then you tap record payment, and it says payment recorded. Voila! And it sends them all of their information. It tells them it was paid. And then you can do new sale and pay someone else's invoice. Or you can go back over to Square for Retail and complete another sale. 